From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Morning Edition. Thank you so much for joining us on this Monday, March 25th. Let's get started. This is the main spot after games, after, but then again, that goes back to Oakland losing everybody up, you know, Raiders, the A. Frustration for devoted customers and employees. In and Out Burger says an official goodbye to Oakland. That Oakland probably has one of the biggest hearts out. I feel like that like, defines us. Defines us. As one business leaves Oakland, another one pops up. These entrepreneurs are standing up for their hometown and focusing on a bounce back. It's been amazing that they've touched millions of lives, and we are looking forward to supporting that next generation of parents, if you will. Improving the lives of our young people across California, a commitment to children during a big anniversary. And how sweet it is, a sigh of relief as Stanford women move on to the round of 16. Oh, Stanford women celebrating as they should. I'm Gianna Franco. Can I just really quick, today's my uncle's birthday. He watches us every morning. Hello, Uncle Noe, happy birthday. Uncle Noe, good morning, Uncle Noe, and we wish you a happy birthday. And if you're celebrating a birthday this morning, same for you, no matter where you're watching us from, whether it's the Bay Area or streaming online. Good morning, I'm Reed Cowan. Let's go outside right now on this beautiful Monday morning and see what Mother Nature has to say about your birthday. There's a golden glow for you. Take it in, celebrate it just the way we do when we take in Darren Peck, our wayward meteorologist, sometimes in the morning, finding shelter here on the morning show. Good morning, friend. <laughs> We're happy you're here. The poetry comes out on Pix Plus when we switch over. This is the reason to make sure people switch over with us. That camera's vanish point, that was from Sutra Tower. Sunrise coming up at 7.05 this morning. And that was one of the most spectacular views that we've had all day so far. The view we're looking out here outside the windows here from the virtual set shows us the scene looking out towards the Bay Bridge and a very common one playing out across much of the Bay. A lot of low to mid clouds out there to start the day. If we wanted to see if there's anything more meaningful in that, we go to first alert Doppler and there isn't. Maybe a drop or two of rain showing up here off the coast, but none of that's getting over here today. And if we watch the clouds, there's plenty of breaks of blue sky that come through today. So the theme with today, twofold, it's a little sunnier than the weekend was. It's going to be a little warmer, actually, than the weekend was by just a couple of degrees. And it's going to be less windy for most of us. If you're near the water, we're going to get an onshore wind that's going to turn on through the afternoon and evening. So look at San Francisco here. As we go through the afternoon and evening, look at the coast, anywhere near the water, especially through the Golden Gate. That onshore breeze is going to make it feel a little cooler for you than the numbers would have you believe for daytime highs. So if we take a look at the, the bay as a whole, we're going to the low 60s today in the South Bay. That's pretty close to average, but you'd spent most of last week before we started to get these systems coming back with more rain. You were in the 70s for a while, so everybody's had to kind of readjust to going back down to average. And remember, the number here for San Francisco, put about a 20-mile-an-hour breeze on that as the onshore winds start to turn on and squeeze through the Golden Gate. You feel it a little more there today, so a little bit more of a wind chill in the afternoon. All right, that covers Monday. All focus in the next visit is going to be on two rainmakers coming our way this week. First one's Wednesday, not that big potentially a bigger one by the end of the week. I'll see you with that coming up in just a few minutes. For now, guys, back to you. All right, Darren, sounds good. Let's talk about those freeways right now as you get ready to head out the door on this Monday morning. Starting a little slow in some spots. 880 at Paseo Grande already busy. There's a snapshot of traffic taken just moments ago from one of the Caltrans cameras. You can see it is a slow commute, so we're tracking those brake lights now as you head over towards the San Mateo Bridge this morning. Definitely give yourself a few extra minutes as you make that trek through there. Uh, public transit, if you're taking a Capitol Corridor out of the East Bay, train 525 has been canceled at Emeryville due to a quick problems, so certainly keep that in mind if that is your commute this morning. If you're going to have to hop on the freeways instead of using Capitol Corridor through there, I will say this, westbound 80 is slow in Emeryville heading towards the Bay Bridge. We see that backup already building this morning. And here's a look at conditions for that commute through the Altamont Pass. Windy this morning, in fact, an advisory in effect for drivers heading through there. Be extra careful. It's busy anyway, coming out of Tracy, getting on to 580 all the way to North Flynn. All right, Gianna, thank you. San Francisco police have a mystery on their hands this morning. The discovery of two people shot to death inside a Bayview home. Uh, this was the scene on Dwight Street and San Bruno Avenue last night around 845. You see police there with the police tape and the flashing lights. That's all we really know. A lot of questions here. Police still not tipping us off to exactly what the circumstances were. 
we're asking more updates throughout the morning, especially for those of you who are in that neighborhood and concerned. Protests in San Francisco against Israel's planned ground operation in Rafah and the portion of Gaza where more than a million Palestinians are in shelter there as tensions between the United States and Israel grow more intense by the minute. You know, over the weekend, Vice President Kamala Harris said an Israel assault on Rafah would be, quote, a huge mistake. Now this. Act up, fight back! Act up, fight back! Act up, fight back! Act up, fight back. You know, that was a rallying cry historically used by AIDS activists in San Francisco. Now, it's a rallying cry for activists for abortion access. Protesters sounded off at the federal building over the weekend as the Supreme Court prepares to hear opening arguments on a case that could make access to abortion medication more difficult in our country. And what we're concerned about is that given the uh, Supreme Court's past record, anything is possible. So we're wanting to send a message both to the Supreme Court, but also to everybody else. At issue, access to a medication called Mifepristone. The central dispute in this case for the justices is whether the Food and Drug Administration overlooked safety problems when it made Mifepristone easier to obtain, including mail order pharmacies. We're watching the high court today. Taking a live look from Oakland, you know, in the wake of Mayor Sheng Tao announcing efforts to curb crime, the headline making business closure of In N Out has officially happened. Jose Martinez was there. He reports that corporate finally decided there was just too much crime to ensure the safety of customers and employees. Watch. This Sunday marks the end of an era for In-N-Out Burger in Oakland. And it's just really sad at the fact that, you know, a big corporation like this has to shut down. Alina June is just one of many employees saying goodbye to this In-N-Out location where she has worked since 2012. This is the chain's first ever permanent closure and it comes amidst of rising concerns over crime in the area. It's just bitter. It's a real bitter moment. There's a lot of employees that gathered here today, you know, because being that Oakland is a high uh, place of crime, it has increased extremely over the years. Other businesses in the area, including a subway and a dentist, have also shuttered their doors over similar safety concerns. If you're wondering about the future of the employees, Alina tells me they were all given the chance to be transferred to other locations. She declined since she's been working from home for another company, but says she's concerned about the future of the city because... This is the main spot after games, after... But then again, that goes back to Oakland losing everybody up, you know, Raiders, the A's, like... It's just, it's just sad to see a lot of things shut down in the town. And that's why many customers lined up throughout the day to get a last bite, at least here, and to show support to those employees. Take a look at the drive through Dozens of cars ordering the iconic double-double or the 4x4 like Maria Preciado, who's been living in Oakland for over 10 years and usually comes here with her kids. She says she's very sad about the closure of In-N-Out because it's a place located in a perfect spot for Oakland and its surroundings. And it's sad to see that they're closing it because of people committing crimes here. The company announced the closure back in January, saying, despite taking repeated steps to create safer conditions, our customers and associates are regularly victimized by car break-ins, property damage, theft, and armed robberies. Mayor Shin Tao then responded, saying that she would prioritize security in this area. And you can see a police car stationed in the parking lot today. But a security guard who declined to be on camera told us he witnessed at least one car break-in per day. And Alina agrees. The whole theft thing, it just happened so quickly, you know? And it's mainly amongst, amongst this side of, of the parking lot. And then they target mainly people who come and travel with rental cars. So the closest in and out locations to Oakland are now San Leandro and Alameda. And by the way, a new police chief has been appointed in Oakland. We're talking about Floyd Mitchell, former leader of the Lubbock, Texas Police Department. You can bet he will face these issues on day one. But meanwhile, Gianna, stories of resilience coming out of Oakland, optimism for bounce back. It looks like one business closing, another one locally homegrown is opening. Yeah, which is good news to report. This is a new independent vintage clothing shop in Oakland, and the owners are completely dedicated to the city. John Ramos introduces you to a couple of young entrepreneurs. Watch as people pass by the newest store on Lakeshore Avenue. They do a double take and then turn back. What exactly is that? It looks like a store, but it could be an art gallery. 
It's Marche, a vintage clothing store created by 20-year-old Ty Reno Sway and Marco Verdine, who's 24. Bringing a different type of retail, a new experience in, with brick and mortar and physical retail, that's like the goal. Used clothing is a popular trend among millennials, but the trick is finding just the right pieces. It's okay to be worn, even frayed, as long as it's something that expresses creativity and, more importantly, is one of a kind. But it really is a, is a piece of art itself and, and really like shows kind of your fashion taste and, and being different there. That's what's important and what's cool for a consumer is like, you won't see this at any other store for the most part. And, and it's just this one size and you hope it's your size. It's definitely an eye catcher. So these are original 501s from, I believe, 1968. These pants are actually from the summer of love? Most likely. <laughs> Someone's having fun in these, that's for sure. But as much as the business partners are peddling clothing, they're also trying to market their city as well. Both grew up in Oakland and are well aware of the crime that has driven so many businesses away. Directly across the street is Colonial Donut, a business that was infamously robbed three times in six months. But the guys are opening their new store here as a way to stand up for their hometown. That Oakland probably has one of the biggest hearts out. Mm -hmm. I feel like that like, defines us. Defines us, but it also shows like all the bad publicity and slander that people be like just saying about Oakland. Oakland's still here. People run with what they see on Instagram and on the news. They're like. Oh, Oakland's only crime, but you, you come on a Sunday to Lake Merritt and you'll see families picnicking, people walking to the farmer's market, just a lively city that, that locals and real Oaklanders understand. And, and that's the message we want to bring to, to the bigger market and, and the rest of the Bay Area and nation in general. For young people who love the town, that's a pitch that is as appealing as the graphic tees and patched Levi's. I think there's a lot that we go through as Oakland residents and Bay Area residents. There's a lot of things that are being broadcast across the country and on the internet. Um, but, you know, we're still here and we still are living and breathing our inspirations and the things that really allow us to be a unique community. There are a lot of pressures on businesses these days, and to many, operating in Oakland is now seen as a liability. But as familiar names decide to cut and run, it only leaves opportunities for those who believe in the city to stick around and maybe even start something new.